guys and gals. Gather around. Go back to some of those words that you used to describe that important place to you. What were some of those words? Do you remember how you described that place of yours? That important place? Emily, what were some of the words you used to describe that, that important place? Think about those words. I have one. Kaya. I put happy, love, cool, beautiful. Those are all words you associate with a place and huge, absolutely. That's what we're doing today, Emily. Like when you associate words with a setting, that's what authors do as well. Um, that's what you do when you write, when you're an author, and that's what you do when you read, uh, especially in young and old novels. They, sometimes they elaborate on that setting for a specific purpose. All right, so what we're going to do today is practice describing a few places. All right, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to read to you. We read, uh, we read, uh, what was that book? Um, the Harmonica, right? Remember that? We're going to read that and see what we can apply with what we know about setting to the theme of that story. I think you're going to see they're very closely related. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to show you a series of several pictures. What I'm going to ask you to do, describe this place physically. Describe this place and how would it feel like to be there? What would it feel like to be in that place? Any questions? Is this going to be on the board? It will be, yes. <laughs> you won't have to imagine it's just yet. Okay? There's our first, our first setting. Yes. Think about the colors. Think about the mood. Think about how it would be to be in that spot. Try and go for three to five words to get more great. Thingies in the sky. Are they cars? Something like that. Oh, maybe. It's oh, you want to be. I get it now. The future. What do you think they were? That's why it's too dirty. They're not burnt. All right. Take the next 20 seconds or so to try and finish your your thoughts, your feelings. How would it feel like to be there? Level. 
you think it's quiet, you think it's loud, something in between. Think about your other senses. Like with that many people, it's going to smell like roses. Mm. <laughs> if it's too dark for anyone in here, feel free to let me know. I think you feel comfortable there. I'm just going to zoom in on this guy's face because I think it's funny. I think you got it right at the camera, right there. <laughs> Take about 10 seconds to finish your, your thoughts, 10 15 seconds. Backspace. Yeah. Walk by the picture. It's an interesting point of view, isn't it? We about ready? Alright, here we go. Record your thoughts and your hypotheses and what and your theories all in your notebook, please. We will definitely have a chance to talk about this in a few moments. seconds to finish your last words. Describe this place. What's it like? What's it not like? We got ready to move on? I think we got one more, okay? If you're real savvy, think about opposites. Think about contrasts. What do you notice that is completely opposite? Put those thoughts down. If you really want to analyze something, break it down into its opposites. to finish your thoughts. some of those words that you wrote down? Brenna. Tell us which picture you're referring to. Okay. The first one, it was that road. Okay. I thought it was tranquil. 
the second one, that old city, so it's depressing. The third one, oh, the crowded street. I said it was frustrating. Number four, I said it was creepy. That the haunted place. Number five, I said it was like felt like like it was weightless, like. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. For the first one, I said it was comforting. And for the second one, I said it was horrible. The third one, I also said horrible. Four, the, the fourth one, I said amazing. And the last one, I also said amazing. Amazing. Okay. All right. I, I want you will all have another chance to share um, because we're going to apply exactly what we did uh, to that text, the harmonica. Okay. So keep all those words in mind because they're going to come back, except they're going to be a little bit different because we're going to have a different setting, all right? And we're going to be able to apply it to a theme, all right, in which we're going to read here soon. So our next transition will be, you know, to move from here to the back. All right. Again. expressions of the people that are in the I'm going to leave it up to you. Use your best judgment. Maybe one word per page, at least. Okay? <clears throat> I cannot remember my father's face or my mother's, but I remember their love, warm and enfolding as a song.
swinging, singing was like breathing to us. For a time, the only music in our house was our own voices, my father's, my mother's, and mine. So off-key, we could crack crockery. desire, a piano for playing Schubert. But like the composer, we were poor as pigeons. Even so, one evening, dusted with coal from the mine where we worked, my father came home and slipped a silvery gift into my hand, a harmonica. On it were his chiry fingerprints. Love the harmonica, cool as water. At my first breath, panted in and out of its minched sides like bellows. I was so eager. Gently, said my father, a smile in his voice, or he'll simply blast it apart. <clears throat> Jews, enough for them to take my mother and father from me. Like a length of kindling in one stroke, they split our family. I was sent to a concentration camp, swallowed, dreams and all, down the dark Nazi throat. Barefoot, I labored alongside others, all of us dull-eyed, bags of bones, digging road through snow. With each shovel full of frozen earth, I thought of my mother and father. Were they still alive? I wondered. from my head. 
Inside, I trembled like a hare crouched in a bush. I had no doubt if I faltered, I'd be dead. Oh, my goose bones are guessing me right now. It's guessing me right now. I remembered what my father had told me of Schubert, how he had lived in a bare room with no fire, though his fingers ached with cold. He wrote his music. Though he ached, he could not stop creating beauty. Though I ached, each night I, skin and bone boy, played for the commandant. He listened and thralled. Each night when I was done, he tossed me bread. He worked us. Beat us for no reason, without mercy, yet he recognized beauty. I cannot imagine how that could be. I felt sick, black inside, playing music for the commandant, who wore ugliness and death upon his shoulders like epaulets. I felt sick, getting bread, while others starved to death. Notice what do you notice about skull, skull. Skull. Oh yeah, we talked about that last time. Intentional? Yeah. Hard player an unintentional skull in the book. <laughs> Alright. I despise myself for every note, every harmonica breath until one day the whisper grazed my ear. Bless you. For what? I asked the dark. Schubert. I slipped them into my pocket. Each night, like the very stars, my notes had reached other prisoners. Play, Jew, the commandant spat, night after night. Night after night, I touched the harmonica to my lips. I thought of my father, who had given it to me. Of my mother, who once had danced. And of prisoners, without hope, who might hear the notes and be lifted like flights of birds. I played for them with all my heart. here in just a moment, so thank you for being patient. I thought this was cool, this quote on the back. Nobody has ever measured, even poets, how much a heart can hold. Zelda Fitzgerald. task, a short formative assessment. What I'm going to have you do, what I'm going to ask of you, is to think about the setting, think about the theme. Go ahead and think about the theme, what this book is trying to tell you to yourself right now. Just have one thing. No. You're absolutely right. I'm going to ask you to write down what you think the theme of this is. Here's this. Here's the catch. 
using some of those words you describe the setting with is going to largely impact how you write. I want you to use one or some of those words you describe the setting with in your theme. If you use the word hopeless to describe one of the uh, settings, the physical descriptions, and you can't use this, but maybe you could say something like, as an example, hope is not hopeless. by ubiquitous sadness. Ubiquitous meaning it's everywhere. Use one of those words. Accept, people, you're a little ahead of me. I'm going to ask you to write it on a half sheet of paper. When I say go, I know. When I say go, I'm going to ask you to go back to your seats. Think about this for the next few minutes. I'm going to give you several sets of instructions right here. That's why I need your attention. I'm going to ask you to go back to your seats. Tear a piece of paper in half, give one to a friend, and then try and think about and write down what you think of a theme of this in regards to the setting is. Then you're going to turn it into the appropriate tray. Then, I'm meeting with life as we knew it. We're reading the rest of the time today. I'll meet with life for about you know, 10 minutes, 15, maybe about 10 -ish. and then I'll meet with Bull Rider. Are there any questions about what I'm asking you to do? Quickly and quietly when I say go, that's what you're going to be doing. Teamwork. Make sure your names are on these.